We are getting ready to start bad Saturday morning. Hi everyone. Good morning or bad morning, I should say. Uh, Chris is here, Darthwing is here, PCP is here, Shenlong is here. Uh, we have uh, we have three people in Twitch. I've seen at least four people chatting though, so I don't I don't know what's going on. Um, it's once again time for bad Saturday morning. Now we got five people in Twitch. Morning, welcome everybody. We're gonna have another bad Saturday morning. <laughs> it's always bad. <laughs> well, not always. Like next uh, next weekend, we'll have a good uh, we'll have a good marathon, a good mini marathon that I'll tell you about later. Uh, but today we've got some bad stuff for you, and boy, is it bad. Um, I'll I'll have a co-host with me. I'll introduce him uh, shortly. Uh, I do want to point out that I have uh, closed captioning working on Twitch. Um, so those of you watching on Twitch, there's a closed captioning button at the bottom of the screen. You click on that and you should be seeing closed captioning. Um, and it, uh, and it works pretty good. Uh, let me know if you, if it doesn't work for you or if, uh, if it's glitching out or something. And, um, uh, we of course need donations. There's the uh, donation link, uh, in the chat. Um, I don't have our donation goal listed anymore, but we're still uh, we're still like fifteen hundred dollars behind <laughs> our goal. The uh, the goal that I started at the beginning of July. Now we've rolled around. We've got the next month's uh, next month's bills are due. Uh, Chris, Chris, thank you for the uh, ten dollar donation. Much appreciated. Um. Yeah, that's uh, that's what I'd like to see. I'd like to see us bring in a hundred dollars uh, today, um, either this morning or during the movie tonight. The movie tonight, by the way, six p.m. Uh, Pacific, not seven as usual. Six p.m., nine p.m., six p.m. Pacific, nine p.m. Eastern. I'm starting in an hour early so I can play it longer. I've got a mini marathon of Ultra Q coming up, the TV show that started the whole Ultraman franchise. The the first um, it was the the first kaiju TV show ever. It started the whole Ultraman snowball, which ultimately led to the whole Power Rangers thing. Ultra Q was first. Yeah, Chris says that I want to see. You will see it, and you'll be glad you did because it's it's nuts. And if you ask me, it's the best series of the bunch. It's the one that nobody's ever seen, that everyone's forgot about, that never uh, that never gets rerun. But you're going to see it tonight, 6 p.m. Pacific, at 9 p.m. Uh, Eastern. Definitely tune in and tell your friends. Tell your friends they're going to see something really special. Uh, I'm going to throw in an episode of Ultraman uh, in the mix, and another Ultra series I found that I'd never heard of. Um, yeah, so I only just saw it this week. For the first time, and I was laughing so hard. Um, yeah, you'll you'll see an episode of that. Um, Power Rangers. Power Rangers was actually cobbled together from uh, clips of uh, various Japanese uh, TV shows, some of which were entirely unrelated. Um, they they just uh, um, uh, the Saban uh, Productions just got the rights to. Uh, uh, distribute several uh, Japanese uh, uh, kaiju kid ninja shows, and they yeah they cut and paste clips together, dressed up some kids to look like them, and and created Power Rangers from from clips. Literally, that's what they did. Um, that's why uh, every every season of Power Rangers had a different name and had different costumes, and that's why they were inter introducing different robots. Uh, uh, different robots and and different uh, special Power Rangers all the times because they they were clips from different shows. Um. Uh. Yeah. Uh, Chris says the first movie was probably the first fully filmed. Probably. Yeah. I honestly don't know that much about the Power Rangers, but I know that much, and I feel like that's all I need to know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's get started with uh, this week's show. I'm going to introduce uh, my my co-host. Turn on your mic uh, wherever you are. There's Captain Slinky. No, you're still muted. Microphone. There you go. There you go. 
Hi, everybody. <laughs> it's Captain Slinky. Yeah, Chris says there he is. Um, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Fox guy is not going to uh, be with us today. He had uh, he had to go do something. <laughs> he had to actually leave his house. Uh, yeah, that so, happens. Yeah, he uh, uh, he might come in uh, in the chat later. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's just me and the captain today. Yeah. Um, he's actually uh, uh, Darthwing. He he's actually. Uh, he's actually at the zoo of the St. Louis Zoo, I think. He has some his oh, wife his, his yeah, his wife had some event at the zoo that she had to go to, so yeah, he's at the Weird. damn zoo. Yeah. I'm I'm <laughs> sure stories that comes out of the pandemic, yeah. You know, yeah. You know all those people went to the zoo during a pandemic. Yeah. So. <laughs> I'm quite sure that the animals have found all of this to be a great relief. Yeah, Everything's sure. so quiet. <laughs> No uh, more performances. Yeah. Garthwink says, no, he was just joking. Well, I actually knew where he was. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, and so I told you. He may join us by chat later, but we've got to... Uh, um, uh, um, Darthwing is saying, with mic check, is there a mic? Okay, okay, he's making a pun. Yeah, uh, <laughs> mic with that. Because it's microphone is with the, the, the word. microphone and, and the Michael and the yeah. <laughs> Very nice, nicely yeah. done. I'm a dad and I approve of that joke. <laughs> All right, we have six people uh, joining us on Twitch. Welcome everybody. Please say hello in the chat and please donate. The donation link just came up in the chat. We we got to get donations in. Uh, we're so far behind. Fifty Street Studio, uh, by the way, is a nonprofit as always. I always remind everybody, I'm Keith, that's Captain Slinky. Hi. Uh, uh, on my left. I posted to Instagram. I forgot to post that I was going to be on this. Yeah. You know what? I, I, need to, uh, I need to host it. I need to host it on, on my other channels. Um, right? Yeah. I always forget to do that. But anyway, I'm, I'm not streaming on YouTube. 50th Street is not streaming on YouTube right now, but I am streaming this on my personal YouTube channel, the ThinkBolt channel, just so it'll be on YouTube. Um, I don't know how many copyright problems we'll have, but we'll see. <laughs> all of them. But we'll see. Yeah, we'll have all of them. <laughs> yeah. Um, so so yeah, we're streaming on. Uh, we're streaming on Twitch, on YouTube, Facebook, D Live, Periscope, uh, Tiger Dial, and something else. I think. Anyway, uh, we're on all oh, yeah. of those. Yeah. What's that other thing? <laughs> I wrote it down and then I lost the notebook I wrote it down in. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's uh let's get to our weekly stories. We have our weekly stories to follow. And Yay. then and then uh, me and Slinky and Mike we each have uh some horrors to contribute to uh, this week's Ugh, scary stuff. I won't be showing any Ultraman today. Uh, I mean this morning. We'll be showing that in the evening and I won't stream that on YouTube. I won't risk streaming that on YouTube. Yeah, that would be. Yeah, we, would be we won't be watching any Ultraman this morning. Um, uh, e banana. What is e banana? <laughs> PCP says e banana. Is that a, a streaming service? If there's a streaming service called e banana, I'm gonna go look at it. I'm on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I I actually want to go. Okay, right now we need to catch up with Charge Man Ken. Let's do it. And see what kind of. Uh, I hope no aliens invade. And see what kind of atrocity he's going to commit this week. I, I love the theme song, though. Huh. Well, this is interesting. I don't actually see the stream. Oh, I didn't share it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the best episode I've seen so far. <laughs> that, that answers the question. You know what? This is going to screw up my camera. Oh boy. Awesome. Yay. Okay, you should see it now. And yep, it, it screwed up my camera. There and I, I had and I had everything ready to go for this morning. <laughs> see, I blame Mr. Fox guy personally. Yeah. Where am I? There I am. Yeah, there, there you are. <laughs> 
I got to slide in like uh Yeah. Like a Brady Bun. Man of the West Kin. Oh boy, more horses. Oh look at this. I'm a lady gunman. I'm a robot gunman. <laughs> What's that cloud of dust? Oh no. Oh no. Bet you it's an alien. They're always aliens. Let's hide behind those rocks. Oh, darn this nag. Well, he's riding a stuffed uh, toy. That's. Are they? Oh, they just opened fire. What? <laughs> <laughs> wow! Well, the end. <laughs> what? On, what on earth is going on? They turn tail and ran. Serves them right. This better be some sort of hollow. Uh, holodeck fantasy. Yeah, like a Westworld thing, yeah. Yeah. Those scary faces, I don't think they like us much. What the... Welcome, what can I get you? Ken is gonna just gun them down. <laughs> PCP says uh, she wants that girl's outfit. It is a nice outfit. The bright green hat. With, yeah. Hey there, Gunman Ken. What a pretty... He said kawaii. <laughs> he said kawaii. <laughs> this has to be a fantasy of some kind. Nope. They're just visiting America. <laughs> <coughs> Bank robberies, train robberies. All sorts of stuff. This robot is some kind of duck. Some kind of duck thing. In the future, all robots will be ducks. And all ducks will be robots. Why, you... Yeah, Ken. I'm betting that this is some... This is some... Uh, some Wild West... Uh, uh, he was stomping out of that guy's yeah. Th This is some sort of Wild West amusement park they're visiting. It has to be. I doubt it. I, I seriously doubt it. That should keep them quiet. Well, the aliens haven't shown up yet. We're having a showdown, Gunman Ken. Oh, he announces, we're having a showdown. <laughs> For your own sake, you better not. Shut up! <laughs> he just says, shut up. <laughs> okay. Did they shoot the horse? <laughs> okay, all, all the guys are gonna, all the bad guys are gonna fall down dead. Yeah, there they go. Yep, there we go. No, no, no. Mm. Yeah, he sure is proud of himself. Saibu. Well, shall we go? <laughs> the the animators are putting a lot of cartoon faces in this thing. Yeah, see, this is some sort of, Thank you for playing here in Robot West Town. Yeah, it is West World. It is, wow. Robot West Town. Where's the robot sex? <laughs> oh, everyone's a robot? Oh, like she didn't know. Yeah, she didn't know. She just wanted to murder. Yeah. Certainly different. <laughs> this episode brought to you in part by the NRA. <laughs> she, she actually thought that they were gunning down yeah, Indians yeah. riding horses. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Uh, uh, it's, 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 a fr it's a front for the aliens. Mm. Hey, Eddie. Uh, he'll come back here to play. Yeah, he will. Uh oh. Ken was listening the whole time, yeah. Oh no. Ken always outsmarts them. Yeah. <laughs> damn him. <laughs> he said, damn him. real guns. I said, next time we'll have real guns. Oh, good. I was. I was missing the Charge Man Ken transformation yeah. filler. Charging go. <laughs> Shoot him while he's <laughs> doing that thing. Hey, Eddie, Eddie oh. came in says, oh no, I'm late. Uh, you're fine, Eddie. Okay. <laughs> it's it's just Charge Man Ken. You know what happens with Charge Man Ken. Yeah, but if you do need an update, just watch uh, the first two seasons of Westworld and you'll be good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, the uh, the closed captioning is over the subtitles. You can turn off the closed captioning, Darthwing. Um, unless you want them. I don't know. I don't know where I can. I don't know if I can change where the sub where the closed captioning appears. I don't think I can. Is that it? Okay, I was talking and I missed the end. <laughs> now we'll never know yeah. what actually happened. So, oh. uh, so Ken opens fire, aliens die, the end. That's that's. Mm -hmm. And we find out that the girl has a bloodlust thing. <laughs> that was actually a, a pretty weird episode. That was. That was yeah. uh, interesting. So I got no sound coming from the stream. I got to figure that out, I think. Hmm. Is everyone else on Twitch is hearing? Everyone on Twitch is hearing everything okay? Now it's time for Hercules. If I don't get to hear Olympia! Yeah, PCP said that was awesome. And they tell me right. the, the sound is fine. Yeah, that was a pretty good episode of Charge Man Ken. People are safe when near him. I always have to point that out. I love that line. Iron in his thighs. <laughs> like you do. Far off the beaten paths of the Lernian forest, three friends arrive at a clearing to await the mighty Hercules. They're waiting for Hercules? Yeah, it was the follow-up to waiting for Godot. You know, Newton, I've never been in this part of the woods before. Of course. Helena is the most useless... Uh, yeah. Ingenue ever. Oh, all she did was fall in a ditch. <laughs> I can't reach you, Helena. You're too far down. Too far down. They need Hercules for this? What will we do now? Well, yeah, first. We oh, no. Wait for Herc. Wait for I have a minor inconvenience. I need Hercules. Uh oh. What is. Oh! What? <laughs> 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 It's in the trickiest of spots. Okay, it's an ancient green tentacle monster. Why, Newton? It's as friendly and as gentle as a lamb. You're right, Helena. The Belias beast would never harm anyone. The what beast? And she's very smart, as you saw. Come here, Toot. Meet your new friend. <laughs> Yeah, th throw the fawn at it. <laughs> oh. A happy scene <laughs> indeed. Side eye action. But to the evil, cunning Willamine. Oh, Willamine. The last time we saw Willamine. Last time we saw Willamine, she said she couldn't be a witch anymore because that was her last wand. Right, right. But here she, she is. Here she is again. Uh oh. Oh, is she gonna kidnap the baby? Okay, whoa! <laughs> yeah, yoink! <laughs> yeah. Wait until Mama finds out that her baby is missing. Okay, this is a bad lady. To go and watch the fun, Elvira. The fun? Where's she going now, Herc? Where's she going now? Probably back to her cave, Newton. This is weird. What? The Belias? Is that what they're saying? I can't tell. <laughs> the action happening off screen. <laughs> I mean, you can't even animate it. That's... Yeah. Hercules with the stars around his head. Whoa! Hey, nice save. He's hissing like a cat. Okay, he needs the he needs the ring. He puts it on his index finger. That is a weird place to put a ring. Yeah. 
No dialogue. Yeah, no, just... I don't like that. I don't like that at all. It seems like he should yell Olympia when he powers up with the ring, but he doesn't. Oh, God. This is... I think he should just only speak in the word Olympia. Like, like uh, <laughs> like, I am Groot. Like Groot, yeah. <laughs> There's a, a suspicious lack of dialogue here. You can't hold her forever, Hercules. What will you do? I don't know. The animators or we'll have the animation do the talking yeah, for us. And go, as you can see, again. with that screen right there, yeah, the animation told so, volumes. That's what's been bothering the Belias beast. Go ahead. You'll be all right now. The baby was right there in a tree. She could have smelled it, you would think. Yeah. Da 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 da. Oh! <laughs> 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 wait, here he goes. Oh, <laughs> wait, everybody watch this. Watch this. Oh, watch me off screen. I'm pretty cool. Let me go. <laughs> <laughs> that was pathetic. <laughs> that was terrible. Well, Willamine, she didn't do any magic, so they, they kept... They kept uh, they kept true to their continuity at least. Okay, coming up next is uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle. Well, Rocky and Bullwinkle's We need to pay to attention. Rocket fuel to take them to the moon has certainly yeah. raised a fuss, especially Hopefully on the moon I can itself. Get this back. We moved to the dark side just to get away from those peeping toms in their telescopes. Now they're going to come oh, right on up. We must stop them. So the Moon Men selected two of their hardiest adventurers and sent them down to Earth with only one mission, to stop our heroes from finding the formula. And so when a hypnotized Bullwinkle recited his recipe for Grandma Moose's fudge cake, hey, can you share that screen again? Audience, it went away when I tried I to get the small Scrooge him now, Gibney? Yes, Clyde. Scrooge him now. As the mysterious ray struck Bullwinkle, he was instantly frozen solid, stiff as a board. So that's what it was like to be Scrooged. Where do we put it? Hmm. Let's take it home in our flying saucer. The moon men had scarcely left the room when Boris woke up. Go on, go on. I didn't miss a word. Where did he go? Oh, there he went. Hey, you, come back with my moose. But he knows the formula. We, we got to take him along. Don't be foolish. You missed the brains of the outfit. The brains? Who's that? The squirrel. He knows the formula, too. He does? Mm. Do I look like a liar? Don't answer. <laughs> <laughs> you go get it. I'll mind your moose for you. The moon men dash back to where Rocky and Natasha were still dozing. Okay. All right, everybody up. I got it. You got it? Okay. It's all right, lady. They're yeah. just playing oh, well. ordinary moves. It's a beautiful cartoon. Which anyways. one of you is the brains? I am. I am. Because if you are... Okay, so she's wearing a mask you. for COVID. Is. is that the... Which one is the squirrel? <laughs> no, that's just what I got a, yeah. a, a oh, up here. We're taking him with us. You too. Come on. Bye-bye, darling. Have a nice trip. It looked bad, but Rocky's nimble wits were hard at work. Okay, we'll go, but it does seem a shame to miss the party. Uh, party? Sure. The government always throws a big party for visiting spacemen. With... with <laughs> paper hats? And noisemakers? <laughs> yeah. Well... Maybe we could wait a little while. Of course, we need our entertainment, Chairman. Who's he? My pal, Bullwinkle. Oh, that's easy. We left him right... He's gone. Sure enough, the wily Boris had stolen Bullwinkle and was at that moment heading for a lonely house high on a hill. He can't go far. That moose was scrooched. Scrooched? How long did you scrooch him for, Cloyd? The dial said eight. Eight what? I don't know. It's either eight hours or... Eight years. Well, Bullwinkle was still frozen solid, and Boris couldn't loosen him up. Then exactly eight hours later... Ooh, you're conscious. Eight oh, hours. Oh, I'm Bullwinkle. Where <laughs> am I? This is your new laboratory. I am your new assistant. Shall we get to work? Well, uh, let's see. I That's guess so. That's a great character design. Uh, two cups is. of flour, one teaspoon salt. Are you taking all this down? Yes, yes. Uh, could you speak a little louder? I'm rather hard of hearing. Oh, certainly. 
Testing, one, two, three. Little did Bullwinkle know that Boris's hearing aid was in reality a powerful shortwave transmitter, and that every word he uttered was instantly heard in another country far away by a band of sinister spies. Don't fail to see our next episode, Monitored Moose or the Carbon Copycats. Okay, let me let me pause for a second. So you're not hearing the cartoons? I'm hearing, I'm hearing nothing. Yeah, and I and I've gone through absolutely everything. Yeah, I I suspect it might be. I suspect it might be. Uh, uh, I need to set a, a Discord. Um, oh, I gotta change your picture on the. I, I, I have. To, <laughs> I have to, oh, I'll have to set I'll head. have to set an output source on Discord. I suspect. Um, there I am. Yeah, but if I've got if you're hearing if you're hearing my voice over Discord, but not the cartoon. Yeah, and I can't figure out. I've gone through every like I've even yeah. I've tried muting you. Yeah, I've tried going in and and doing all the yeah. things. Yeah. And uh, I think it might have to do with the that uh, we had to maybe pop it in later. Okay. Hey, well, I saw I saw that. That was yeah. cool. Yeah. PCP gave us a cheer. PCP cheered. That's I've awesome. Cheered 100 bits. I think 100 Yay, bits. 100 bits. I think 100 bits is a dollar. I think. Woot. Yeah, woot. <laughs> well, woot. thank you, thank you, PCP. Um, yeah, we got to because we haven't had this particular problem before. You've always heard the cartoons in the past, right? Over Discord. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's another new thing. Yeah. Yay, new things. Love those. Let me see if I've got... Uh, um, uh, well, this is interesting, because what I... Oh, it looks like what I've actually... Oh. Oh, I sh no. I sh Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um... Um, what I shared was uh, OBS, not the VLC player. I see that. That's probably yeah. why I was able yeah. to see yeah. all the fun stuff. Yeah. Uh -huh. Let me That's see. Cool. Let me uh, let me change change windows. Okay. Okay, so you should see a black screen now. I see a black screen. Okay, let me turn, let me start the cartoon. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> you should see Rocky and Bullwinkle here. I hear it! I good, hear good. It. Awesome. <laughs> okay. You -E water. We actually solved the problem in like two minutes. Hey, Rocky, that was awesome. Watch me pull a rabbit out of my hat. Again? Nothing up my sleeve. Presto! Uh, Wrong hat. I take a seven and a half. Now here's something we hope you'll. Now really here's something like. we hope you really like. It's clutch cargo. Oh. <laughs> oh. Cargo oh, and pal spinner and paddle foot. It's Last week, uh, paddle foot straight up fell into the alligator infested river. Yeah. Clutch and company had found Chubb Perkins, but not Mary. Fearing right, in his underwear with a tiger. The yeah. party was forced to cross the treacherous... Now remember, we decided this was a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> and there goes Paddlefoot. Yep. I got him. Save. Oh. I'm going to need another Paddlefoot. Hang on. We're almost there. Yeah, of course. That's how cliffhangers work. That's not what they showed us last time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yikes. Glasses in the top hat. Oh, whiplashes. Whiplash has straight up revealed himself as the culprit. Durham says the beatnik right, flute, flute music doesn't fit the jungle team. <laughs> oh, man. These crazy crocodiles yeah. stealing are bumming me out, yeah. man. Step into our bushes. We were expecting you. Oh, you speak English. Isn't Manos fans of fate being killed in the background? <laughs> well, gee, Mr. Headhunter, thanks for saving us. Very decent thing to do under the circumstances. 
you can help us. Uh, we're looking for a blonde young lady, perhaps. She's with us. Uh, Gee, you don't seem like him. The voice of Spinner, the yes. little boy, is obviously a, a, a grown right woman. Now. Yeah. Cabbage heads. And say that young Cabbage lady heads. showed us how to make a new dish. Guamki. Guamki? Yes. What was that face? Cabbage. Delicious, don't you know? Mm, yeah. <laughs> animation in Clips Cargo? What? Yeah, actual animation. Wow! That whiplash fellow will be trying to catch up with us. And you have such modern trust. There's more of that beatnik bongo. These jungle trails are impossible without it. Ah, there we are. <laughs> Professor Zero came in. He says they're they're wearing ear pods. <laughs> Same woman. And Miss Mary taught us how to make guam But where is Daddy? He's not with you. Oh, the alligators ate him. And no, there he is with the, the toothless tiger. Yeah, with his hetero life mate, the toothless tiger. Yeah. Everything is fine. And we can thank Clutch Cargo and his wonderful friends for finding us both. And we mustn't forget my faithful friend, Busted, the tiger. <laughs> Spinner still has that look on his face. Yeah, he's, he's seen some things. Yeah. There they go again. Yeah. Gosh, Clutch, look. They're all smiling. They are friendly headhunters, aren't they? Look, he has a he has a, a medal pinned to his chest. Ow! And so ends the story of Clutch Cargo. And oh, that was the end. Covered. That was it. Be sure to tune in for the next exciting adventure. So that story arc was only five episodes. And the Arctic yeah. Prisoner. The that Arctic. They, they did them in five episode arcs. I'm pretty they did. Sure. They did. Yeah, because it was once a one, once a day on the weekdays. I think. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, hello everybody who came in uh, during the thing. Hi. Friendly hand hunters with human leg bones in their hair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Says Steve. And uh, as he pointed out, um, beatnik flute music and AirPods. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was satisfying, that I guess. Was already. Yeah. Clutch Cargo <laughs> was was. Amazingly popular. It was really successful yeah. in the day. It was um, cartoons that were made for television were extremely rare. Yeah, at, at exactly. the time like when and, you've only got three other competitors. Yeah, sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, it was great. At and, least in the top three. And also, um, that that synchrovox technique was so strange. I'm sure there was a yeah. lot of talk about it at the time. Because when I saw Clutch Cargo That's in the late 60s, too. when I was like four years old, it was running mm -hmm. on TV every day. People were still talking about the, the mouths, the creepy mouths. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. But anyway, um, the woman doing the voice of Spinner, her name, mm -hmm. uh, her name is, and I say her name is because she's still alive. She's 91 years old. Her name is Margaret Carey. Oh. Her real name, Peggy Lynch, but her, her stage name, Margaret Carey. She was born in 1929. Uh, she, uh, she was Tinkerbell? in Tinkerbell. She was, she was the animator's model for Tinkerbell, the Peter Pan yeah. cartoon. Yeah. Um, and when she was a child, she was in some of the Our Gang films in the, in the 1950s. Yeah. Or, excuse me. I had no idea. Yeah. Um, huh. Or 1930s, probably. 1930s or 40s. <laughs> um, yeah, she was the model the, for Tinkerbell. She was a dancer. And uh, then she was married to the guy who who started Cambria Studios that made uh, uh, Clutch Cargo. So, Cargo. of course, so of she course was the voice she... of... Uh, I'm hearing my own voice there. Um, hmm. uh, it's coming and going. But anyway, she was the voice of Spinner. And that was her mouth, too. <laughs> <laughs> how wow. many how many how many voice actors actually have their mouths appearing on screen the the, <laughs> the people who did clutch cargo and that's it that that's <laughs> yeah <laughs> um wow. uh, durham steve says i've heard of clutch cargo for 56 years never saw it till i found 50th street saturday morning well 
Oh well, you're welcome, Durham. Steve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they used to they used to show Clutch Cargo back at the beginning of the Comedy Channel, back in like nineteen ninety ninety one. Back when oh, really? the Comedy wow. Channel first started, they showed Clutch Cargo and they showed Supercar. Um, oh, cool! Yeah, that's probably how all the the Jerry Anderson stuff got a second wind, I guess. Uh, I don't know about that. They should they showed uh, Clutch Cargo and Supercar and, and something else. I don't remember. I don't remember what, but they found some weird cartoons that nobody else was showing. Um, yeah. But yeah, I've I've seen plenty of Clutch Cargo uh, when I was a kid. Nobody reruns it anymore, and this is the first time I'm seeing it all the way through from the beginning. And this is the first time I'm seeing Bullwinkle all the way through from the beginning. Oh, I've seen plenty of Bullwinkle. I've certainly never seen all yeah, of it, but never in order. Yeah, yeah, and never in order. And I'm I'm really pleased with the way Bullwinkle is going. The, I I really yeah. like the idea that they introduced the the Moon Men immediately, mm-hmm. in the episode two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to continue. I'm going to show my selection first. Okay. And I'm going to continue the uh, the clutch cargo trend with um, the oh. other the other show no. that Cambria Studios no. created a couple of years later. It's called uh, it's called uh, Space Angel. <laughs> You immediately recognize the Hollywood sci-fi music. Yes. I mean, it's not bad. Those designs are beautiful. Yeah. Scott McCloud, Space Angel. Scott McCloud, Space Angel. The Exiles. This is going to be a full story arc here, so it'll be a full half hour. Nice. Prison ship from Hollenbeck. I have to take care of that. I'll be right back. This is something... That I never saw as a kid. And there's Margaret Kelly again. The maximum security gangster elements from every planet in the galaxy. They give me the shivers. <laughs> the rock is the most heavily guarded spot in the galaxy, Chris. Just the same. What if there's a big prison break? Well, See, the same voice. With space suits, you know. The artwork for this show was done by Alex Toth. Relax, Captain. A crew will not tremendous fire. comic book artist All who was the guy who designed Space Ghost. Never get away with this, low guy. Are you trying to tell me I don't know my trade? I am a professional, Captain. Commandeering your ship is a necessary step in our plan for liberating the Queen. And yeah, Durham Steve, it is Alex Toth. It's very recognizable, She's isn't he? Leader? But of course. You won't get away with this, low guy. Ah, Captain, but I will. You will see. But enough conversation. The Queen's expecting us. Take the Captain below and release the prisoners. These uh, Space Angel stories were written by the same guy who wrote uh, a kid's TV show a few years earlier called Space Patrol. It's basically the same stories. Okay, was... I'm back. Hey, what is this? Where's the captain? You will please drop your blaster or you evaporate. Why you? Get him! <laughs> Why you? <laughs> <laughs> Round up the rest of the Boy Scouts and release the Queen. You idiotic fool. What kept you so long? I've waited for months. We were unavoidably detained, uh, Highness. Uh, they questioned us for months before transferring us to this place. Be quiet. General, apprise this bumbling imbecile of our plans. Her Majesty has conceived of a means of making a rocket invisible. An invisible hmm. rocket? A space Nazi, yes. he sounds like. With such a craft, the riches of the universe will be ours. And with the prisoners of this asteroid supplying our crew, we'll have the most talented assortment of cutthroats ever. I like this villain. But, Highness, what about the space angel? This space angel... This this was one of the earliest shows I ever did. VHS tape training Really? So you've seen it? I've seen it. Uh, Alex Toth. It's like early Alex Toth. Beautiful artwork. Uh, It drug me in from the comic books into the tape What in blazes is happening? I was telling them while you were gone that Alex Toth is the guy who designed Space Ghost. Yep. So so he did Space Angel and then Space Ghost. 
Yeah, I think so, so, I think Space Angel may have even been like his first, like where he was actually in charge. Oh, okay, where he was the art director. What is this character's name? Queen Zora? Is that? Sure. Sure. I've, you know, I've never really paid much attention to the actual yeah. story on these. Yeah. <laughs> Back in the day, I would just have this playing on mute in the background all the time. Only the beginning. <clears throat> and you know, Space Angel is part of the reason why I have such, uh, such animosity towards Clutch Cargo, because when you look at the art design yeah. between the two, it's, yeah. oh, what a disappointment in Clutch Cargo. Wasn't that uh, LAX? <laughs> it looked like LAX. <laughs> that guy was freaked out by that paper. <laughs> the name of that freighter is <laughs> the FR-111. Oh, um, yeah. Yes, they were one. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> Look, the space pirate ship actually has a Jolly Roger on it. <laughs> it's nice of them to, to mark them. See, he's, he's still freaked out by that paper. He really is freaked out by that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did not say to send news. <laughs> Everybody conveniently has a headset microphone in front of their mouth. <laughs> yeah, this is a well-designed show compared to yes, Clutch Cargo. Really is. And it's got this the great Hollywood generic space music. Mm-hmm. So I was saying before, he designed Space Angel and then did Space Ghost. So you can basically take take any interesting word that you like and put the word space in front of it and make it sound badass space light bulb no that's not a cool word light bulb was not a cool word dangerous gangster commandeered the ships he landed on the rock and released the evil queen zora and the rest of the prisoners the queen and her general like you remember um for making an invisible rocket ship with the release prisoners um, acting as crew well there's space academy <laughs> <laughs> and you remember Space Academy was set in the, in the space year 3100 or something? <laughs> anyway, I think even in one episode of Space Academy, they had to use a space computer uh, to do something. I mean, yeah. Yeah. No, Scott, no survivors. Oh, take the cargo and hmm. uh, it's the doctor from Deep Space Nine, isn't it? That's a new wrinkle. Deep Space Nine? Star Trek Deep Space Nine, Locke, right. or whatever his name was. Mm. No, not Locke, or, uh, uh, I can't remember. Space Pancake. PCP says Space Pancake. Um, <laughs> PCP, did you ever see, that reminds me of, um, there was a show in the late 90s called Space Above and Beyond. Yeah. There was an episode that revolved around pancakes. Yes, um, and I'm not making that up. Yeah. Each cargo vessel was attacked. You mean to go back to that show? I was yeah. into it. What do you make of it, Professor? Everybody looks like they've been drinking Kool Aid. The mouths are bright red. In the future, all mouths will be bright and supple. I doubt it, but it might be worth checking into, Crystal. <laughs> okay, Scott. I'll check with security. Mayday! Mayday! We are being attacked. Vector 6, Section 2. Mayday. They put a lot of effort into blinking lights. Mm-hmm. Vector six. This guy is wearing two. Ah, uh, here we are. Yeah, low tie. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's going to a hoedown later on. Yeah. He's wearing a, a, a mid 20th century Southern gentleman outfit. Yeah. We're in this up. I've got a Dukes of Hazzard's taping after this. I think it's time the Space Angel took a hand in this. Mayday. Mayday, we are being attacked. <laughs> oh, what an unfortunate Mayday. placement Mayday. of that microphone. That should get this space Otherwise, we'd be able is, to is, see the is, is, is Space Angel Very Scott McCloud's secret identity? Very clever. Is, sure. Because he said, yeah, sure. Because he said, I think it's time that Space Angel took a hand in this. And I think I know where I can find him. fuel to last us for years. Shall I alert the crew? At once. While the space angel is off on his wild goose chase, we strike. I like this villain. I like her costume. Yeah, it takes a lot of dedication to wear one of those things on your Yeah. Head. She wore it in prison. <laughs> in, in space prison. Not even a 
Oh, in space right, prison. Scott. I've never seen so much nothing, Skipper. Stand by. We're heading back to our own system. I think we've been duped. Oh. Whoa! Whoa! You turn. Yeah. yeah. That was really crappy animation too. For you something so really simple, they screwed that up. And what, Captain? And what? Space pirates! Space pirates! Oh, they were invisible. Scott heads back toward the vicinity of the previous time. attacks. Yeah. Look. Wow. Look at that spaceship Stay there. Away. They didn't complete Stay the model. Get set no. They, <laughs> yeah, they were supposed to take it off the yeah. screw. Yeah. Yeah. down the edges a little bit. Glue it together. I said, we'll just, we'll just fly it like this. Oh, there's actual space lasers. Look. It's the Starduster. Quickly. Cut the lights and engines. What the? We should disappear, okay. Skipper. What now? Keep your face in that scanner. We'll close on the area. <laughs> Keep your face in that scanner. <laughs> just, yeah, just. I, I like that. Watch your face. He's maneuvered alongside. He can't see us. The fool. He's blundered into a position the where fool? we can blast him into infinity. Ready all guns. Can the Starduster withstand a direct hit from the invisible Durham space Steve says a spaceship has a periscope. Yeah. Yeah. That would be more. That would be more appropriate than having those huge windows. <laughs> Blast off for another exciting adventure in outer space with Scott McCloud. I think I know why Space Angel wasn't as popular as Clutch Cargo. Because they don't have any, they don't have any funny sidekick animals. Oh, that they can beat the alligator. Right. Yeah. Attacked seven spacecraft, leaving no trace. As Scott, Crystal, and Taurus and the Starduster were returning to the base, they need a, a space dachshund. Which the Queen had broadcast. They came upon space. Yeah, and then Steve. Yes, Steve. Steve. Yeah, Steve says no beatnik music either. Yeah, they do need a robot. They they do need a silly robot sidekick. And the the they need a, a a silly robot sidekick that malfunctions at the end of every episode. So so it's waving its hands at the end of every episode, going blah blah blah, blah and then everyone can laugh. We hit with everything we have. Will you ever learn? Yeah. We're drifting out of range from the recoil of our salvo. Continue the drift. Until they depart. You know what? There are no aliens in this show either. Should we meet again, my oh, whoa. This is actually too realistic. That's that's the problem. Yeah. This was like Firefly before Firefly. <laughs> I guess. Give it up, Taurus. Give it up. They know their heat rays can't hurt us now. Firefly. <laughs> Firefly had a naked girl. And, yeah. In order for this to live up to Firefly, that look oh, there they go again. Yeah, uh, that that redheaded space girl would need to, um, yeah, would need to periodically kick somebody's ass. Yeah, his head. So he's like the, the great granddad of that Parsifoot, Professor Parsifoot character from Space Academy. If the Queen is still using that hideout, we'll get word to you. Okay, Scott. We'll wait to hear from you. I'll send a Space Force squadron to that vicinity in case you need help. Out here. Out space here. Force squadron. So, this Space Angel is coming to visit us, eh? That is good. That is very good indeed. You are to All be Kurt Russell? General. <laughs> he thinks that looks like Kurt Russell? Where? Which one? Who? To obtain information that is Show in yourself! I that am one? pleased, Your Highness. Your Highness <laughs> has a plan. Of course, Logai. We will eliminate the space angel once and for all. He says the other bald guy. Okay, we still don't know which bald guy. That means. <laughs> the other bald guy. Yeah. <laughs> the, oh, one in space. yeah the, the other other bald guy. 
the white hair on the sides. Okay, that was interesting. How 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 the spaceship launched? Did you see that? It was like launched out of a tube. Yeah. <coughs> Animation. <laughs> We're going to leave the star duster upstairs while we investigate. Leave oh, the, the microphone was just so close yeah. to being able to cover up his mouth. Sphere. Yeah. Not so oh, danger missed of opportunity. Not quite. Right, and we can always land the star duster if we need it. Let's go. Our PCP had to go get her real life pancakes. She's asking what she missed. Well, you didn't miss anything. Yeah. Just uh, watch the season one DVD set of yeah. Firefly, and you'll be. You know what? This 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 little space hopper they're landing in looks like an yeah. Alex Toth design. This mm -hmm. looks like Space Ghost. Yep. So far, so good. Scott. Look! Woo, 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 woo. Welcome, <laughs> okay, that's not Alex Topp. That. <laughs> that Alex Topp was a little busy, and they said, we you need you to draw, like, a, a UFO type yeah. of a thing. And sure this was given to an intern. Yeah. Better do as she says. I have a copy of the Alex Toth um, uh, sketchbook that was, uh, that, was, that was withdrawn from print. Yeah. What will happen when Scott I have it right here. Oh my! It's it's Don't on my shelf, but it's wrapped in bubble wrap. Space. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I'll have to, for the best. Yeah, I'll have to pull it out of bubble wrap at some point. Yeah. And show it off. Yeah, that one and the and the Wally Wood one are just incredible. Yeah. Especially when you compare the two of them and how they. Like their space stuff is just so yeah. For another exciting yeah. adventure in outer space with Scott McCloud, Space Angel, in space the story Angel. of the Exiles. There's the uh, the donation link that just came up in the chat on Twitch. Everybody, please make donations. We Click we it. need them badly. Last time, Queen Click Zora it. We've got somebody watching us on Facebook. Say hello from Facebook, please. We should see your chats on Facebook. Watch her on Facebook. Crazy. <laughs> they left yeah. the Star Duster in orbit and landed in a space sphere, where they were met and captured by a robot. A space sphere captured by a space robot. Hmm. So, space angel. Fired a space laser. I have anticipated this moment for a long time. Can't anything stop your evil shenanigans? You. <laughs> oh no, not evil shenanigans. Ah, Logai. That will not be necessary. The worlds of the solar system have been alerted, Queen Zora. Why go on? Relax. You can't possibly fight us all. It is your solar system that must beware. I now have an army of the most violent creatures from all your planets. They anxiously await the moment to attack. Hmm. There are ah. many among your peoples that they wish to meet. I see. You are a fiend. Steady, Chris. <laughs> I agree. Them away. Yeah. We have much Don't work fly to off do. the handle. Patience, Logai. <laughs> <laughs> I will language this moment. You see, we shall never see these earthlings again. Throw them into the dungeon. Oh, they have a dungeon. I have a rather Space dungeon. Space dungeon. Yeah, you beat me to it. Of my guests. <laughs> the three earthlings should appreciate such a unique experience. <laughs> oh, the look. The cone of silence. Yeah, the cone of silence. <laughs> you see what we did to this space chair? <laughs> That's the agonizer now, booth. If we could do that to humans, you'd be in trouble. It's a risk we'll have to take. You Ooh. always run, oh. jump ahead of a oh. yeah. He has a Maxwell oh. Smart phone in his shoe. He does. This is... clear Speaking of cone of silence. Yeah. Wow, they threw them in the space dungeon without taking their spacesuits off? They should have thrown them in there naked. That's space naked. <laughs> space naked. <laughs> okay. Uh, right. Yeah. Cool. Oh, is he remote controlling the space dust, the star duster? I said space duster. <laughs> space duster. There we go. Go up. Go up. Oh no. They're actually putting some thought into controlling it with the, uh, 
Attitude rockets. Yeah, that's not bad. So, so he can see it from here? Sure, why not? <laughs> Professor Zero says nobody wants to be space naked. <laughs> I'm glad that's over. Good work, Skipper. I sure hope no one saw it land. Don't think they did. Me too. Or they'd have blasted it. Just let me at those bars. I'm afraid those bars are too big for us. Easy, yeah. drunky. Yeah. I'll use the hydro torch. Hydro torch? Okay, yeah, they, the they, yeah. Whoa! Well, that that would have been helpful. Yeah. Earlier. All clear. You two get to the ship. Taurus, get our weapons. I guess there's atmosphere out there. Contact the <laughs> there is now. Yeah. I'm going to do a little snooping. To you, low guy, goes the honor of a. Okay, so so they didn't notice that he blasted a hole in that wall. Walk. No. Pleasure, Highness. Will you accompany me, General? Of course. But keep your blaster ready. The Space Angel may have a trick up his sleeve. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Can Can start like a blast gun well, for them? Maybe. Don't miss the next exciting episode of Space Angel. Why didn't Angel. he just use a dark blast and space criminal? Yeah, that's what this show is missing. There's no, there's no humor in in this at all. Last off for another exciting adventure in outer space with Scott McCloud, Space Angel, in the story of the Exiles. Do you remember last time Scott, Taurus, and Crystal were captured by the evil Queen Zora on the I dead planet? That. In the cell, Scott landed the Starduster by remote control. Right. Uh, we just saw that, yeah. And then blasted the bars with his hydro torch, just as uh -huh. Logai and the general, with guns drawn, approached the cell door. Skipper, right. you in there? Come on in. He calls the, the hydro spot. torch. Chris got the space force. What's that yeah. got to do with, with water? What'd you find out? No clue to the invisible <laughs> ship. It's all about molec molecules and science and yeah. things that are yeah. primitive minds would Let's take understand. A start. Yeah. I've got a plan. You three Earthlings will come with us to the Queen's I like Cambridge. that criminal side, of side view, one. but not the front view. I wish to talk with the space angel. I refuse to move. Blast him, General. It's a pleasure, little guy. Not even a goodbye, General. The space angel. So, <laughs> is that criminal name? Is it Lil Guy? Like L I L apostrophe Guy? Now back out. I don't know. Be my pleasure, little guy. What happened? General tripped that metal door and got away. General, what have you done? The general. Wow. Taurus. How? Tie Lil Guy up. I'm going to blast the door. This space force. You stupid fool. We must escape, quick, to the ship. But the army, Highness, they must be warned. And Logai... Logai and the army are the price we pay for your bungling. Now, get to the ship. I like the Logai. Oh, Logai. Okay, they're they're saying Logai. But we cannot oh. escape. I got okay. here and here. They have to launch off of a ramp. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Steve, Steve says in space, no one can hear you whine. Let's get back to the Stardust. We've got to stop her. Well, they didn't get away. Anything, Taurus? Not a thing, Skipper. They're probably there, but we can't see them. Now we'll never catch them. Search for the afterburner flame, Taurus. Aye, Skipper. What about the squadron from uh, GH? Search for the afterburner Possibly flame. So they could see the the ship's rocket exhaust the whole time. And nobody caught on. We can make a triangulation check. Ouch. Give me a fix, Taurus. Stand by, Skipper. Those were disintegrator blasts. I hope our four field deflectors hold. <laughs> no luck. I hope yeah. we, I hope we weren't them. disintegrated. They could be <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel disintegrated. Chris, 
Check the constellations on the port side. Taurus, check on the starboard side. Okay, Skipper, but I don't get it. You will, Taurus. That is, if it works. I'll Wait a minute. Not. Check, lad. Go ahead. Just look for the look at the constellations. Check. Sagittarius. Check. Aries. Check. Aries. Aries. But that's in Aries the line. Ooh. That's it, you old bull. Let's see you place a bullseye right in the center of that constellation. Skipper, have you lost your bloomin' mind? What's he? How can you hear constellation? <laughs> you cannot change the laws of physics. Okay, God. here goes. Oh! Wow. Good heavens! Scott, how did you know? Simple enough. When you and Taurus both spotted Ares at opposing ends of the galaxy, one of them had to be a fake. Sure. <laughs> okay. Queen ship. <laughs> 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 he had problems with swallowing that part. Why, sure, Wait. the whole ship was just a big, fancy mirror. That's what made it invisible. It reflected blank space. Exactly. Chris, Chris contact space mm. force and tell them to pick up survivors. If there are any. So if we just take mirrors into outer space with us. Yeah. Oh, wow. And oh. so ends the story They actually did blast the whole ship. <laughs> Don't miss huh. the next exciting adventure of Scott McCloud. Maybe the real Angel. space pirates were the friends we made along the way. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Durham Steve says she looks like Della Street. She does. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh from that's from Perry Mason, right? Um Yeah. Anyway, as I was telling people before, um the woman doing the voice there was the same woman who did the voice of Spinner in Clutch Cargo. Uh Margaret Carey uh, is her name. Um, mm -hmm. she's 91 years old, still alive, and she was the, the, the body model, the artist model for Tinkerbell in Disney's Peter Pan, um, as well as the voices on, cool. and she was married to the guy who created Clutch Cargo and Space Angel. Yeah, I don't um, know how I never knew that part. Yeah. <laughs> it, well, it's not I mean, like... I'm a Disney guy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because when I mentioned her name before, you immediately said Tinkerbell. It's oh, Tinkerbell! Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. Uh. Next up, we're gonna see the. Uh, we're gonna see the the selection that uh, Mr. Fox guy so gave us oh, for boy. this Here for today. Go. And um, Mr. Fox guy, for those of you who follow us every week, he's the one who picks the really bad stuff. And he, he really does. He did a number oh, on us. He did a, a number on us this week, um, and and you're gonna see shortly. I I, I keep it a secret from both of my co-hosts <laughs> when, whenever, so they never know what they're gonna <laughs> see. So that I can go. Wait, this is one of my favorites. <laughs> you're gonna. You're probably gonna say that, but I don't think you'll yeah, mean it. There's a rich lore behind this. <laughs> oh gosh, you don't even know. Okay, okay, I'm just gonna start it. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's the Gary uh, Coleman show. Yeah. Based upon the they do one or two different movies uh, made for TV movies. Is that character? I can't remember. Ah. Uh, yep. That very distinctive early eighties. Yeah. They put a harmonica in like yeah. every. Theme yeah. song. Oh God! There's not even any any dialogue. No. This... No, I'll give it Gary Coleman. He's okay. an angel. He's gonna so, make it rain. And there's a bad guy too. So, so Angel Gary Coleman, Angel Gary Coleman used his halo powers to make it stop raining. On somebody's picnic, that's it. Yep, Fouled up fossils. Oh, yuck. Probably invented by the same guy who dreamed up report cards. Let's see. Levitation. <laughs> Keeping an object in air without support. Hm. Kid stuff. I can do that standing on my head. Yikes. Transcendental I'm meditation in heaven. Head. And I'm levitating down instead of up. Oh no. Ball. Ball. Uh, this is 
just it's the idea of it's such a tired idea for somebody you know Han, they, they come to Hanna Barbera the network comes to Hanna Barbera and says we want a, a Gary Coleman cartoon and so they just pull out uh, tired old uh, TV movie idea number 46 the Okay, you play yeah. an angel. You play an angel who helps kids. And you're, you're trying to earn your wings or yeah, something. Yeah. I don't know. Just go do it. The thing is, if Gary Coleman is an angel, that means he's dead, right? Yeah. And they don't well, even... They, they, do the they have... One is dead. I mean, he was cloned several times during the course of the <laughs> yeah, Okay. All right. So they don't include any lore in this show, I'm sure, about how he died. I'm sure they don't touch on that at all. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, no, they don't. No, like not even in the in the made-for-TV movie on whence the concept is based. They didn't go into how he's dead. It's just going to volunteer. He's dead. He's trying to get his wait. Way. There was there was a TV movie with Gary Coleman yeah, playing an angel. Him and uh, uh, oh, the actor that played Benson. Oh. Uh, yeah. It was, uh, it was big stuff. Hmm. What was Which that? is why NBC did this. They were hoping that it was going to become a whole... A whole franchise, yeah. Yeah. Did it... Did, was Hornswoggle Horn in the movie? No. And you can see how much effort that the uh, designers put into this Hornswoggle character, which is zero. Yeah, this is zero. Yeah. Let's see. Do we have any left? Anything left over from any other shows we did? Well, we got this guy. We can put a purple hat on him. Done. I can outrun him with one wing tied behind my back. You don't have wings. Yeah, you don't have wings. That's the thing. Huh? Yeah, Angie. A race and horn swoggle. Yeah, I. Talking about. Uh, talking about. Dead ghosts. I never, I never thought of traditional Halloween ghosts. You know, ghosts that look like you know, scary ghosts with a sheet. You know, that fly yeah. that fly through walls, going woo. I never thought of those as being dead people. I always thought of them as being just like Halloween monsters. You know what I mean? Like, well, it's the terror of uh, of forgotten laundry. <laughs> the uh, the uh, um. Uh, like like uh, Casper and the ghostly trio, I never thought of them as being dead people. So, so well, neither died till now. Yeah. Oh man. Like that that stupid uh, that stupid uh, Casper movie, that live action movie. They actually gave him a name. Uh, he he was he was a dead kid named Casper McCormick, I think. Wow. And th yeah, they gave him a backstory, and I'm like, okay, that's wrong. Ca Casper is he, he's like um. He's a ghost in the sense of being another kind of, of creature. Yeah. Like, Frankenstein isn't isn't a bunch of dead body parts sewn together. He yeah. Is. He's a Halloween monster. Yeah. Yeah, Halloween monster. He's Boris Karloff. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, Angelica sees my shoes. If I have any shoes after this. His virtual shoes. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, his angel teacher's name is Angelica? Yeah, I'm sorry. Mm, yeah. <laughs> There's actually a, a rich lore and history behind that name, too. Yeah, Chris is laughing at my my terminology for calling them Halloween monsters. Yeah, that's that's how what, that's what I always thought of ghosts. Enough malingering, you two. Spence needs to get back to shoveling. Who was that you just said uh, enough malingering? Oh, was it the... the That's that guy. That guy? Yep. Okay. With his cool flipped up collar? Uh, did you say <laughs> yeah. It was the 80s, all collars were flipped. Yeah. Surely you aren't going to let them go in there by themselves, Lebeau. Whenever I see somebody with a... Guardian Angel Lebeau? Uh, with one of those... Uh, no way. With one of those black jackets that looks like a generic members-only jacket. Yeah. I'm, I'm always like... Uh, how long have you had that jacket? Since 1980? People don't think that's funny when I say that. Oh, look, this was recorded from uh, 
Adult it's Swim. Yep. Oh, it, it says Adult yeah. Swim on it. Why, why, the, that era of adult swim. why the hell was this on Adult Swim? I guess, ironically. They put it at the very, yeah, they, no, they, it was the crossover time. It, it was right around the same time that they were doing, uh, like, just bringing in Space Coast, Coast to Coast. Yeah. Uh, and they were doing some experimental stuff, but for the most part, it was 70s cartoons from midnight till 5 a.m. You had the mm. Harlem Globetrotters. Oh, God. Super Harlem Globetrotters. The Super Harlem <laughs> And this. Yeah. <laughs> I like what the way he Globetrotters, Super Harlem Globetrotters. Nobody I want to meet. Where can they be? Mind your footy, Tina. Hey, Miranda came in. Uh, she says oh, this, does, this doesn't even look like Gary Coleman. I disagree. I think it does look like him. It's his voice. <laughs> it looks like one of the Gary Coleman. Yeah. <laughs> one of the Gary. Durham Steve says uh, Gary needs a hydro blaster here. That would work wonderfully, but only if they were in space jail. Right. <laughs> oh, do they really, Laveau? How's that? Wow. It's the Andy. Hang on. Considering the alternative, that's very good advice, Andy. He means we don't have any choice. Help! What? Wow. Yeah. Who needs a hydro blaster? Yeah. When you got a halo that's basically the the weapon from the movie Troll. But you know the way out, right? Never mind. Look, it's the archaeologist. What? Do you see what I mean? What? Obviously some sort of optical illusion. That optical illusion is giving off bad vibes. This rock about it someplace else. You don't scare me. What the hell? <laughs> I don't I don't understand at all. It's really quite simple. Andy, where are you? Whoa. If, if Hornswoggle can shake their faith in angels and a heaven by proving that evolution happened mm. uh, by introducing Pro Magnon Man, okay. then Andy will cease to exist from right. non belief. Told you there's a there's a deep rich lore behind them. <laughs> Saved by the yell. You're kidding. Griffin. How you doing, Miranda? Are you still with us? It's not Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't blame Miranda for for leaving real quick. Seeing the Gary Coleman is playing. These are the caveman relics we were looking for. Caveman relics. Oh wow. I thought the title of this cartoon was about fossils. Fossils, relics, you know, yeah. it's all the same thing. Oh, he's back in his dress. Okay. I can hardly wait. Now, just one quick leap. And what? <laughs> Boy, is your face red? And not to mention your, uh, <clears throat> never mind. You what? No, oh, underwear. I'll get even for this. Why, I'll. Andy, where are you? Oh, so the angel's name is Andy? It's not Gary? No. I thought he was playing himself. No, because if you were to imply that we're watching the adventures of dead Gary Coleman, yeah. it's a different thing entirely. Yeah, you would have to explain why Gary Coleman is dead. And I don't want to get into that. that that's... Because <laughs> that's, that's actually happened at this point. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to... <laughs> Yeah, we're treading on useless Yeah. Oh, God. Are you sure you have to go home, sugar? I was going to make some groups. How many of these damn Saturday morning shows have we seen where people are trapped in a cave? I don't know, but I think we've got our new uh, uh, Wikipedia page to start. <laughs> it's like the whole quicksand thing. Yeah. Like, like growing up when we when we were kids, we thought quicksand would be much more of a problem. Yep. <laughs> I remember grilling my second grade teacher on no, but seriously, if I fall in quicksand, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> going, going, yeah. gone. Here's here's the worst part about the Gary Coleman show. You know how that episode just lasted uh, four hours? Yeah. No, there's two per per half yeah. hour show. Yeah. Good morning, Oakville. How's my 
my town doing? Hmm, nothing shaking. How about that? Hey, hey, looks like Guardian Angel of Bones lucked out today. Do you remember science fiction comics? Comics. Do you remember a failed um, spin-off or, or like a a spin-on from Mork and Mindy called um, what was the name of that awful show? It was about an angel named Random. His name was Random, and he was an angel, and he was a comedian. He, he was a, a like a totally unknown bad comedian wearing with thick black glasses like I'm wearing right now. Yeah. Um, and he, um, the, the network gave him his own show and he was an angel. The, the whole premise of the sitcom was that he was an angel that came down to visit this family to help out the kids. Just like this. It was exactly like this, okay. this premise here. And it was, um, I call it a spin on because they had a, they had a special hour long first episode that had a cameo by Mork. Um, and apparently wow. Random and Mork were friends. Why Mork the alien would be friends with a, a human angel? Because it, cause, cause at one point Random didn't know what to do, so he got on the... So, so he, he did like this, whatever, and summoned his his friend Mork for advice. And, and, and they had a conversation that lasted about 30 seconds. And that was it. That way the network could advertise that... Uh, uh, that what's his name made an appearance in the. Uh... Yeah. Oh, wow. Boy, what a great crossover yeah. idea. And I remember. Out of the blue, I just had to look. Out of the up. blue, out of the blue. I remember they they were the network was really plugging that show because they had an hour long primetime premiere like on Thursday evening, and then the following Saturday morning they preempted an hour of cartoons to show it again, to so make sure the kids would see it. Well, of course. And it was terrible. Yeah, it looks bad just from what I'm seeing here. Yeah, it wasn't funny. Wow. Uh. Darn. Looks like this birdcage. Like the the female interest had to have five nephews and nieces living with them in order to get it. Yeah, they had a bunch of kids. Yeah, they had a lot of kids. Wow. And I seem to remember this comedian. What was the star's name? What was the comedian's name? That's what I'm looking for. I did a, I did a weird search. There we go. Let's see here. Robert Boyette. Robert Boyette. I seem to remember him. I may be thinking of the wrong guy. But I seem to remember him in his stand-up act having a joke about, that I actually thought was funny. He, he joked about how you can never send your dad to go do the grocery shopping. If you tell him to get Oreos, yeah. he'll come back with Hydrox. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. It's yeah, funny because right. It's, it's true. funny because it's true. So I saved a penny. Yeah. He <laughs> said, it's funny because it's true. Jim, Jimmy Brogan. Jimmy Brogan might be the comedian I'm thinking of. Ah. It, it, I, that does sound like Jimmy Brogan. Not, not, yeah. not the out of the blue guy. Is she carrying golf clubs? Okay. Yeah, that's a, she's uh, Casey Jones from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. She's about to fight crime. Um, well, you knew who it was, Gary. Come on. Or Andy. Yeah. Now, what is it that this that this villain wants? Is, is his whole... He wants to be bad. So his his I whole point his whole point he thinks the devil. His whole point in life is just to is just to screw with Gary Coleman and, and his <laughs> angel his angel goals. What not now, Angelica. <laughs> Can't you see I got horn swaddle on my back? What I have no idea what's going on. What the <laughs> What the what the? Funny faces. What the those I don't guys? get what's going on with this show at all. <laughs> that was actually a little bit of animation there with, with Gary Coleman's reaction there. That is reaction shot. Yeah, they actually did some rather than just okay, yeah. animate this part of the screen. So he does everything with his halo. Halo like 
guess. Oh, they don't make them like they Hi, use. Am I late? Perfect time, oh. Andy. Right. Is this a garage sale? What's going on here? He volunteered to make this an auction we'll never forget. So, so Durham Steve is saying that that was Jimmy Brogan in Out of the Blue. Oh, it was okay. Maybe I. Just I, I don't. I don't know if that was that Jimmy Brogan. Oh, well, now I gotta look. It can't be. I'm gonna lose track of the whole plot of this episode. I hope you're happy, Durham Steve. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, I'm happy. I might have played that, uh... Yeah. I, wish I, had done my I looked at the wrong one. I don't know where I got... Oh, creator was Robert Boyette. That makes sense. Okay. That makes a lot more sense. Okay. So, yeah. So, I did have the right... I did have the right comedian then. You had the right day. The, the joke about the... Hydrox. Listen. Was it two twirls and one snap? Or one twirl and two snaps? Was it two twirls and two snaps? Oh. Okay, so so there's, so angels require uh, procedures to do their magic. They, they yes. don't. It's not just a matter of will. It's more like enchantments and uh, spells. Hey, the auction's doing great. Durham Steve is saying that Brogan looks like Exodor from Mork and Mindy. I don't know. Look at Exodor again. <laughs> I don't think they look that much alike. <laughs> Mr. Fox guy would not be happy that we're not paying yeah. attention to this cartoon, though. That's Oops. Just, uh, okay, so Hornswoggle is just making sleep. random mischief. Yeah, I think that Hornswoggle is the polar opposite. Like, he's a demon trying to get is orange and pitchfork or something. <laughs> so he has to cause chaos and evil. Okay. Trying to earn his town. Trying to earn his pitchfork. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Why is that girl dressed like a, a 1920s flapper? <laughs> time travel. Oh, didn't you, didn't you know it's a lot of time travel in this film? Mm. That's, uh, maybe she's French? <laughs> I, think I've been I, I don't care. <laughs> she, is she is totally. I don't care. She's totally dressed like um um like Connie Barker. Uh, uh, not not Connie Barker. Um, Bonnie uh Bonnie from Bonnie and Clyde. What what's what was her name? Bonnie Barker. Okay. I said Connie. <laughs> I know where I got that. That was from Maxwell Smart, uh, the, yeah. uh, an episode of Get Smart. He was supposed to catch these villains named Connie and Floyd, and and she was her name was Connie Barker, daughter of a Carney Barker. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was good stuff. Yeah. The Louse Up Little Old Bowl Foundation. Why did I remember all that detail? <laughs> the, the yeah. Something I saw once. Yeah, you dedicated some hard drive space to that file, and it will not delete. Connie and Floyd. Connie and Floyd. Excuse me, my dear. I am prepared to donate fifty dollars to the auction if I may have that silly box. <laughs> Term Steve says Todd Bridges and Dana Plato cartoons sound pretty good right about now. <laughs> Golly! Again, Talking about sad child <laughs> actors having their own cartoon shows. Right. My God! It is sad to know that that yeah, uh, uh, Willis is the only one of different strokes cast members that's alive. Yeah, still. yeah. Oh, there's poor kids. Yeah. What? So the cigar box sends him into convulsions? Yes. Another part of the deep rich lore. Wow, look at that run he's doing. What the? What? Yeah, he just... Yeah. Wow. What's up with Yeah, what, what was that all about? 
<laughs> and this always tricked me every week when I, and yes I watched this every week you did? but yeah, yeah I was like oh good they're starting another one oh this is gonna be great and it's just the the ending credits it's just the pre-roll to the credits yeah like they just needed some filler so okay let's uh let's show the the opening again only I don't remember any little girls dressing like that uh, ever <laughs> uh, you grow up in France. It's all the rage. Well, we still have seven people watching. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. So that I, happened. Yeah. So yeah, that that happened. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Gary Coleman. The Rockford Files. Rockford. It sounded like good yeah. sister. <laughs> The whole Rockford Files thing. Bring, bring. Hello. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, how how awful would have a rock would a Rockford Files cartoon have been? <laughs> well, he would have had a funny dog. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Miranda says I would literally rather watch Clutch Cargo. Well, you could have, but you didn't get up. Yeah, Miranda. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and we saw a full half hour of Space Angel, which was the sequel series to Clutch Cargo. The made, Superior! It made by the same people. It was basically Clutch Cargo in space. Um, and Miranda says touche. <laughs> so I really, <laughs> well, I really got one over on it, dude. Yeah. <laughs> now, I don't think Jim Rockford would have smoked in the cartoons, Steve. It yeah. would have been lollipops or something, or they just wouldn't have done it. <laughs> Yeah, he would be eating carrot sticks or something. Yeah, um, and he would have been voiced by Frank Welker. <laughs> yeah. The dog would have been voiced by Frank Welker. <laughs> no, they, it, it's Frank Welker nonstop for every role. <laughs> All Frank Welker. Yeah. It's the, the Frank Welker power hour. Yeah. <laughs> Golly, you, you could put together a Frank Welker power hour. Golly. You could. Yeah. Uh -oh. You know, we're, we're going to have to do that. We're going to have to do that. Yep. Um, Definitely. There would have to be the schmoo. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what else? Uh, could just do a, a, a cavalcade of all of the wacky sidekick, sidekick animals. That wasn't he, wasn't he the voice of, uh, of um, Slimer uh, in uh, the real Ghostbusters? I, I think so. Because for some reason I had it in my head that it was Dave Coulier, and I know that's wrong now. Like one <laughs> as soon as it came up to my head, saying, it went, "Oh no!" Because Frank, Frank I stored that file wrong. Frank Welker was the voice of uh, one of the Ghostbusters. Um, yeah, he was. Uh, he was the one that took over for uh, uh, the Peter Venkman role. From... I I don't. Hmm, I don't think so. No, I think he. No, was... he took it over in the later season. I, I, no, I think that was somebody else. I think Frank Welker was the voice of uh, of. Um, oh, Frank Welker. Oh, uh, sorry, Dave Coulier is. Uh, I yeah. still have Dave Coulier on the brain. Yeah. Holy crap! No, he was the voice of uh, the Dan Aykroyd character. What's what's the really Ray? Ray, yeah, he was Ray Stance. Yeah, and, yeah, okay, I hear it. Yeah. And I think he was doing um, Slimer as well. Wow. Right, we're we're gonna have to get to the bottom of that. Mm -hmm. Okay, Frank Welker Power Hour. We'll, we'll have uh, we'll have ninety minutes of uh, Frank Welker. Frank Welker, not some stop. sometime later on Bad Saturday Morning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Chris is saying yes to that. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, hello everybody. I'm Keith. This is uh, 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 so. Captain Slinky. Oh yeah, that's I, I was I almost I couldn't think of there's there's a friend of mine who also streams, his name is Space Captain Zemo. I I was uh, I was I had to stop myself from saying Space Captain Zemo. Um uh, <laughs> but this is Captain Slinky um yeah, co hosting today. Um Mr. Fox guy is not with us this morning. Um but he contributed that uh that awfulness that we, we just witnessed. Um uh, and uh we do have uh one more uh, one more block to show, but but, the, but yes. that's still coming up. Um, Fifty Street Studio is uh, is a nonprofit. We do need donations. We've we've had uh, 
We've had ten dollars donated so far. Uh, we need more. There's a donation link in the chat on Twitch. We need to make as much as we can. And I'll be streaming yeah. again tonight at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. That's an hour earlier than usual. And we will have a three-hour marathon of Ultra Q. Ultra Q from 1966, the Japanese TV show that started the entire Ultraman franchise. Yeah. It did not have Ultraman in it. But it's but, uh, the prequel series to Ultraman. Right. Uh, it's the series that started it all. Uh, we owe uh, Ultraman uh, and all kaiju uh, TV shows, yeah. including Power Rangers, to Ultra Q, and you'll see it tonight. You'll get a you'll get a face yeah. full of it. Um, it's like it it's like a cross between. And get this, it's like a cross between the Outer Limits, the X Files, and a Gamera movie. Wow. It's it's a black and white half hour TV show. I'm gonna show you four episodes and then I'll show an episode of Ultraman. Because there was a there was there was a monster that appeared in Ultra Q that they brought back for Ultraman. Oh. Um it's one of the most popular Ultraman monsters. And then I'll finish off with another Ultra series that I'd never heard of. Um and I saw it only about a week ago and I was laughing so hard. Um, and I was like, how have I never seen this? <laughs> um, is it the Dynaman series? Or? No, no, it's not Dynaman. Okay. okay I um, love Dynaman. That's yeah. Good yeah. Dynaman. Yeah. You're talking about the USA uh, yeah, version of, yeah. The, the, right. Let's split up and search all of Japan. Yeah. The, the night flight version of Dynaman. Yeah. Dynaman was the first of those Power Ranger type shows that was brought to the, U to the United States. Mm -hmm. And it was brought by USA network for night flight. And the oh, the cool. uh, the English dubbing they did for it, they just made up their own stories, and it's hilarious. Yeah. It is hilariously funny. I definitely need to show Dynaman at yes. some point. Um, they named the uh, they named the villains. Um, <laughs> they gave the villains names. They're, they're like monster space monster villains with horns and eye patches. You know the whole kaiju. Sure. Kaiju uh, TV series stuff, and they named the the villains Mel Fujitsu and <laughs> Horny Tanaka. <laughs> and, uh, I I learned recently that they were not saying horny; they were saying something else. But all all my all my life, what I was hearing, what I was hearing was hor Horny Tanaka, which I think is much funnier. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and then and when the and whenever the monster fights would start, they would play uh, popular music, stuff that was popular in the 80s. Like suddenly, um, yeah. uh, suddenly um, uh, Funky Town by Pseudo Echo would start playing while they're fighting. And you're like, wow, this is great. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good stuff. Um, yeah, I definitely need to show uh, the, the USA version of uh, Dynaman. Yeah, and I need to show the yep, Japanese yep. Spider-Man series at some point. Oh, well. Japanese Spider-Man. Japanese Spider-Man is <laughs> is one of the strangest things I've ever seen. Yeah, right? Yeah. Uh the the the, the thing that was popular at the time were the uh the kaiju drama series. So when ja when this Japanese production company got the rights to do Spider-Man, of course they did the same thing with Spider-Man that they do, do were doing with everything else. They gave him a giant robot. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's nuts. Marvel or I do believe. <clears throat> uh what was it called? The Marveler. Really? I th yeah. Uh, or it or, or it was Marvel or the Marveler, something like that. The, like, was the name of his ship that turned into a robot. Yeah, it was yeah. called it was called a Jaguar or something or a Panther. I don't remember. The Marveler. Yeah. That would be funny. I, I don't remember what it was called. Uh, anyway, it, it played a role in that stupid book, um, uh, that awful... Hey, I love that book, Ready Player One. The movie yeah, was you, you knew what I was talking about. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I didn't like that book at all. I, at first, oh. I, was, I was reading it and having a great time, and then at about chapter three, I realized, wait a minute, here I am laughing and smiling only because I'm recognizing all the, the, the references, yeah, the and, for, reference. and, for, and for no other reason. And then I realized this book is nothing but a list of references. It's just a list of <laughs> pop culture references. And then I, but I, but I finished the book. I read the whole thing. And 
uh, by the end, I was saying to myself, "Wow, Lee, did a twelve-year-old write this book?" And then the the final scene, the the final scene that was supposed to have, be romantic, supposed to have this big romantic climax with him and the girl. I was yeah, like, "Okay, was like, yeah. yeah, okay, a twelve-year-old did write this book." Because <laughs> <No. laughs> <laughs> well, that was a terrible book. I didn't believe any of it. I mean, you have to have, even for oh, something... It was made up, you know that, right? Yeah, I do know it was fiction, okay, but you have to have a certain... It, you it have to have, actually happen. You have to have a certain believability to anything. Yeah. I, I, I didn't accept any of it. Anyway, okay. What, what, once, I, once I gave myself over to it, <laughs> it, went, it was yeah. a lot easier to, yeah. to... Okay, okay, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For some reason in the future... Yeah. The eighties are going to be popular again. That's my strong belief in okay. life. I have to okay. be relevant in something. So, so that's where it begins and ends for you. Yeah. yeah. Pretty much. See, I'll I tell you. I, I tell you the kind of things that I did not believe. Mm-hmm. This this kid was supposedly in high school, right? Right. He was he was like a freshman in high school. He was young high school. He had seen every single episode of Family yeah. Ties and memorized every single episode of Family Ties. <laughs> and he played an original Pac-Man console until it glitched out. Which yeah. uh, he he had, <laughs> he had he had he had too many superpowers. He could do literally anything. And yeah. I was like, okay, this guy. This that's why I was thinking was this was written by a twelve year old because this is a twelve year old's fantasy, and it, yeah. it, it just it just went way too far. And every page of the book was like that. The, the two examples that I just gave you, every page of the book was like that. And I was like, oh, God. And he had that whole movie memorized. What was that movie that they had to, that they uh, had to act they, out? They, uh, well, War, War Games. Ones. War Games. Yeah. He had the entire movie yeah. memorized. And yeah, exactly. I just, I didn't. But, you know, it depends on if you're, because I mean, like, you know, I, I, I've got a teen child uh, of my own, and they also they can do that type of stuff Um, with with their friends. So I'm like, mm. it's a little bit more believable to me. I mean, that, that, that my kid has seen every single episode of Futurama multiple times. That's, that's not the same thing as, that's not the same thing as family ties. And come on. (laughs) Well, it depends on what your own personal. (laughs) uh, Well, it implies that it implies that he not only, it implies that he must have seen and memorized every other sitcom as well. And there are hundreds of them. True. There and, are, and he's, yeah. and he's too, and he's too young to even live that long and do his schoolwork. <laughs> <clears throat> well, that, that, that is true to have seen every single eighties movie and every single eighties yeah. television show and listen to every single eighties uh, album. And uh, yeah. But how old are you? <laughs> and i and i am 84 well, yeah, years old yeah let's let's move on yeah let's move, let's on. move on we let's got, get to we let's get to our final show so hello again everybody please donate uh 50 street studio needs the money donation link is in the chat uh, and say hello in the chat if even if you've said hello already please do so again hello uh, in the we, chat. we always want to talk to everybody and before we bore everybody too much Let's get back into the the TV set and play Saturday this. Morning. Oh, yeah. Come on now, sing out. It's time for the ghoulies get together. They got jokes for everyone who is left the songs in fun. So let's go. Oh boy. Yeah. I'm like filmation limited anime. gonna do their thing for you they're kind of strange and they're real funny but they're real funny <laughs> as a kid this was my my first exposure to the classic universal monster really <laughs> yeah oh boy i know pity me <laughs> well this uh, and like monsters and yes chris frankenstein was on a skateboard <laughs> the groovy ghoulies yes, yeah this is yeah when you sent this to me you said this was one of the greatest disappointments of your of your life what did you mean by that uh this was one of those things that it was on like in syndication when i was when i was young okay uh and 
local station, Channel 11, KCTW, uh, would show kind of random cartoons. By the way, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Yeah, that is Sabrina. This um, this show, Groovy Ghoulies, was a spinoff of the Sabrina show. Yep. Like, they, it started put as, like, Sabrina and the Groovy Ghoulies. Yeah, they were, like they were a segment on the Sabrina show, and Sabrina was a spinoff of the Archies. Yeah, exactly. So, a rich tapestry. Yeah. And every gag you're seeing here was repeated every week. They just showed the same... Every week. They showed the same episode every week, basically. Yeah, well, that, that was the point. It's like, before school, I had time to watch, if I got up early yeah. enough, two cartoons while I was getting dressed and having breakfast and stuff. And Channel 11 would just show random cartoons, mm-hmm. it seemed. Because, like, sometimes it would be Star Blazers and, or Looney Tunes or, you know, something awesome. Okay. And then, for some reason, at least three days a week, it was stupid groovy ghoulies. Yeah. And since it was the only channel that had cartoons at the time, what else am I going to do? Watch yeah. the news and be informed? Yeah. Oh, right. thank you. That voice of, of uh, Dracula, by the way, that's um, that's Larry Storch. Yep. We saw him last week in your uh, Ghostbusters selection. Yep. See, I've got a theme going. <laughs> You've got a Larry Storch theme? Oh, my God. <laughs> The gag with um, Frankenstein being shocked and then saying, I needed that. That's every every episode has that gag in it. Check out the wolf wagon. But it was behind a tree. Did you see that? You couldn't see it. It was behind a tree. There it is. I'd like to have a model of that, but I don't think it yeah. could actually exist in three-dimensional space. Oh, there's the plant. There's the man-eating yep. plant. Why does all of it look so green? Looks to me like he is caused it. Oh, uh, who is that voice? Uh, I can't remember his name. Yeah, the Jughead. He was the voice of Jughead. Yeah, um, and he was, uh, Ernest. I'm uh, not Ernest. Uh, he was on, uh, the Andy Griffith show. Yeah, the Andy Griffith show. Yeah. But this, uh, the Groovy Ghoulies, this is, man, we're getting getting a lot of traction out of Filmation Studios. We, yeah. This was, when was this show? It was, what, 69? 1969, 1970? Uh, yeah, that's when it was, like, 69 to 70, I think. PCP says, is he supposed to sound like Wolfman Jack? Exactly. Of course he is, yeah. Because all You know Wolfman- what? Was I th- was this before Wolfman Jack? This might have been yeah. before. It's not before Wolfman Jack. Well, I'll be darned. You see, I'll be darned. needed was a shot of vitamin B. Voice of Howard Morris, Ernest T. Bass. Yeah. Yes, thank you. But this was uh, this was one of Filmation's first big hits. They they created the Archie show, which uh, um, Archie's um, Man, I am dog what was it called? U.S. of Archie or Archie's something? Archie's Funhouse. Oh, and they, yeah, the the United States of Archie, yeah, the yeah. U.S. of Archie. The they created the Archie cartoons in the late '60s, and along awesome with it, they created the Archie's uh, band that you recorded the music for the show, Man, and the Archie's instance, and the Archie's had a. They had those big hits, um, Sugar Sugar. Um, they were they were they were really big legit hits, um, and uh, you know top ten hits. And uh, the the Archie's cartoon was the the biggest hit on Saturday morning. It was the the most popular thing on Saturday morning. It's hard for me to describe how much of a success it was. And um, Hanna Barbera, up to that point, had been the kings of Saturday morning. Hanna Barbera had almost a monopoly on Saturday morning until Filmation came along, and then suddenly Filmation had the biggest hit on Saturday morning, and Hanna Barbera was furious. And um, the, in response to that, they created Scooby Doo. So the the whole Scooby Doo model came from Archie and the Groovy Ghoulies, which you're seeing now. Yeah, okay. Hey, what a groove. 
Because later in the show, later in the show, there's going to be a, a fake pop music song. Yeah. And that's what Scooby Doo did. did the yeah. It was the Archies, uh, the the Archies, and then Hanna Rivera created Scooby Doo in response to that, and then they also snapped up, they snapped up the uh, uh, the uh, Josie and the Pussycats franchise. Yeah. Before filmation. They should have had it filmation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's fair because then the, when you go uh, from Scooby Doo. Then Filmation was playing their little catch-up game of just being the cheapest person. Yeah. You could take any, you know, hey, yeah. we want a Gilligan's Island cartoon, and yeah. they'd find out what Hanna-Barbera had bid, and they'd say, oh, we can do it for like 20 bucks less. Yeah. yeah. And, and it really started showing in the sound. Yeah. Here like, we go this with is, a... This is relatively good. Yeah. They did Love create you. an original song for every episode. Which is, yeah. Most of them. It is pretty amazing. It's an amazing amount of work. And every once in a while, it was a pretty good song. I don't know what this song is going to be. A PCP says, uh, PCP says, my daughter's music during her personal slideshow at high school graduation was Sugar Sugar. Nice. Awesome. Um, Um... I remember Groovy Ghoulies during its first run. I remember what a big success really? it was. It was a huge success. It was wow. people. It, it was on all the time. People talked about it constantly. Oh. I and I remember disliking it even at the time, even though I watched it every yeah. week. Yeah, that that's, that was my relationship with it too. Yeah. He's <laughs> like, ah, oh, Groovy Ghoulies again. Fine, I'm yeah. watching it. I don't remember seeing anybody running it in syndication, though. Yeah, I guess I guess your local TV station did. But yeah, I, I never saw it again well, remember, after the original. It was, it was some weird in it. Like mm-hmm. they just had. I think that. I mean, this was the '70s. They may have just bought some animation package and just mm-hmm. threw things on as it came yeah. on. Yeah. That's kids, one of the things hurt. about having a pop song. Every episode, they could reuse the same footage. Over. Yeah. Yeah, that frog. <laughs> yep, these guys. They react the exact same way to every mm-hmm. song. A few weeks ago on the Secret Movie Club, we watched um, a movie called Murder by Death from 1976. Oh. And um, uh, th- there's this big house that these detectives are locked in, and um, the villain watches them through the wall but not through a not through a painting with eye holes cut in it he watches them through a moose head on the wall that has the eye cut out you can see his eye looking through and you're like you know how could he even get in there but you know his his eye but at the um, uh, near the end of the movie he's he's furious with them this Chinese detective um, that's that's talking that's talking in like broken English Uh um um See, I can never see a moose head on the wall without thinking of that. But his, but but his voice is coming through the moose's head, and it's shaking back and forth, and he's saying, "Use your damn articles!" <laughs> so, so I can never see a moose head on the wall without thinking, "Use your damn articles!" Is that is that the one with Truman Capote? In yes, it? That, that was him. Okay, I love that movie. I was wondering if they, is that the name? Yeah. Death by murder. Murder by death. Murder by Death. I have yeah. to write that down because I've been wanting to see that yeah. again. With Alec Guinness as the butler. Yes. The stars say you'll soon be taking a long voyage by air. Really? Bella's horoscopes are for the birds, you know. Oh, that was a good joke. <laughs> 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 that's, that's the best reaction to <laughs> Okay, I just missed a gag there. No, you didn't. Trust Wait. Me. Well, the doctor said he needed vitamins A through Z. <laughs> you know. Oh. That doesn't even make any sense. Anyway, no. Hello. 
watch out for those the physics of that didn't work. Hey, Drac, God, this is bad. Yeah, I told you. You wanted a bad Saturday morning, I'd bring you a bad Saturday morning. I got a bite. Oh, a hammerhead. No. Mm -hmm. Genuine hammerhead shark. Hey, Agatha. Like, yeah. How do you get to meet a girl at a seance? Easy. You just ask her for the next trance. <laughs> what? I got a bite. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, everybody. Oh. oh. He's gonna say I needed that. Yep. Here it comes. Here yeah. comes. Here it comes, everybody! What? Twice, oh, twice in the same episode. Uh, okay, these are characters that we're seeing for the first time this episode. Oh, really? The Jekyll and Hyde kids? Is that who they are? Yeah. I can't remember the exact name, but yeah, they're, it was Jekyll and Hyde, but they're actually just twins, and one's good and one's bad, which goes against the Jekyll and Hyde, and they both have green skin, and they're both yeah. monsters. Yeah. A little squirt can hurt, Batso. Steve says he's fine with this, because it's not Gary Coleman. <laughs> Gary Coleman would fit in because he is a ghost, technically. Uh, Carol came in. Hi, Carol. <laughs> Look what Hi, Carol. Web chip We're sorry. Oh, <laughs> oh, you scallywags, snitching cookies. I'm going to give Haggis a full report. <laughs> Who is this? We call him Fondleroy? Whoa. Yeah. If you like looking into windows. That's just a place for a shady character like him. <laughs> shady. Hey, puns puns for four year olds. <laughs> well, I'm bewitched. Someone knitted me a pair of Batso and Ratso rugs. Batso and Ratso? Batso and Ratso. Yeah. That's right. Golly, this is only this is only 22 minutes, but it feels like it's it's, it's been much longer than that. Is there gonna be a second song? Uh, sometime. Because we still got because because we still got 10 minutes to go on this damn thing. <laughs> well, there's a lot more story to tell. I mean, there's a lot of loose ends. In yeah. <laughs> Wow, she, she's gonna... Yeah? Yeah. I guess that's what you'd call whale to whale carpeting. That one tree looked like a dog. You see, there it is. <laughs> that's the true first appearance of Scooby-Doo right there. PCP says, did her bottle say pancake mist? It did. Oh, see, there's the dog tree. Yeah, yeah. Dogwood by the barn. Dogwood by the barn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For our beast egg hunter. <laughs> yes. Look at these beauties we found already. Keep your eyes peeled for others. There could be one right under your feet. I think that's the know. same person doing both the mummy and and uh, Frankenstein See? voices. There's one now. Yeah. Golly jeepers, green with pink polka dots. It could I be. I wonder who made this egg. I got a feeling she's right behind you. Smokey uh. the dragon. Oh, no. He sure seems Wait, the dragon actually laid the these eggs? No Is that what they're saying? About that I, yes? Mm. See, that's, that's something that a... That's something that a four-year-old would understand immediately. But an adult yeah. has to be like, wait a minute, what are they saying here? Wait, what? 
what I call a lucky unbreak. We're smoking. <laughs> I think we lost her. Well, I think we also lost the egg. Oh, my golly, oh, my gosh. It's rolling away. It's headed for Gooly Gulch. Mommy, oh, no. Our Gooly Gulch. Yeah, that would work. You saved mm -hmm. the egg. Well, naturally, I wasn't a buffalo haunter for nothing. What? No. <laughs> uh oh. He wasn't a what? Going to have. Yeah. Well, will you look at that, will you? He's the image of his mother. <laughs> yes, the spitting image. Looks like fiery tempers run in the family, you know. And when they run, so do I. Mummy, let's quit this beaster egg hunt. We can't quit. We been Oh God. Yeah, I know. Are we still watching this? Is this yeah, I, I don't. I don't even have anything to say. I, yeah, I, that's. Okay. And oh, this second week, song. group, the Bare Bones Band. They used to play long hair music. Yeah, but then there was a falling out. Oh, let's see if they Miranda, Miranda the says. Uh, uh, okay. Oh, they're singing the, the Kings and Queens songs. I remember this song. Really? I remember this one. Kings and Queens and Knights on White Horses. I remember my dad thinking he liked this song. He thought it was a pretty good song. Um, Miranda says, isn't Frankenstein supposed to hate fire? Yeah, he ran off. He ran away. Yeah, he ran away from that fire. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've run out of things to say. Can we talk more about the history of Filmation? For, for those of you who... We, we've, we've shown so many selections from Filmation already. Filmation, Filmation went on to create um, Shazam and Isis, the live-action shows. Arc 2, they which we... Star Trek the animated series. They, they, Star Trek the animated series. Filmation pioneered the uh, animated... Adaptation, animated adaptations of live shows. Yeah, Gilligan's Island and Gilligan's Planet. Didn't they do the Brady Kids? They did the Brady Kids. Yeah. Um, uh, it was uh, before Filmation started doing it. Um, it was really unusual for successful television shows and movies to have an animated uh, franchise. Um, but then they went on to create. The original Ghostbusters in 1975, which we saw last week, and then eventually their biggest hit ever was He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Yep. He-Man and She-Ra. <laughs> Steve says I would have killed to see Mentor sing a rock song at the end of Shazam. <laughs> Speaking, yeah, speaking of which, I haven't I haven't brought this up yet today, and I should have. I talked with, with Slinky about it before the show started. Next weekend, for, for Bad Saturday Morning, I'm going to show a marathon of Shazam and Isis. Yeah. I'm going to show like five five episodes of Shazam and Isis, the crossover episodes. And uh, I've been looking at... Uh, I don't have any Shazam episodes, but I've been looking at... I have all the Isis episodes. I've been looking at those, and they're bad. They are really bad. Yeah, because ISIS didn't really do much. Oh, Hal Sutherland! Hey! Hal Sutherland retired just like maybe a mile away from here. And I got to know him a little bit. Uh, before he We've got away. seven people watching now. Wow. We've I'm got sorry, somebody. Everybody. We've got somebody on YouTube. Well, you're coming in just as we're finishing. <laughs> and yeah, it, it's, right. been a, it's been a slog today. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're just oh, we finishing. The we're just finishing up our first look at the Groovy Ghoulies, <laughs> which is a bad show. Seriously bad show. Oh wait, what did that just say? Uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch adapted from Archie Comics. Yeah. Blah blah blah, all that stuff. Let me go back and look at that. I have to yeah. read that. Oh boy. Always Sabrina. On your yeah. Sabrina is adapted from the Archie comic book series and appears in the comic book entitled Archie's TV Laugh Out, featuring Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Sabrina is a copyrighted feature of the Archie Music Corporation. The, Ar- oh. the Archie Music Corporation. But yeah, for oh. those for those who who weren't here earlier, the Groovy Ghoulies was a spinoff of the Sabrina cartoon, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, which was itself a spinoff of the Archie's cartoon. PCP gave us a cheer of a hundred. <laughs> thank you, Thanks. thank you, PCP. Um, but yeah, um, yeah. Well, let's go over that yeah, filmation we'll history again. The Groovy Ghoulies. Okay, I did it again. I, I did it again. I I closed the uh, VLC <laughs> VLC, which messed up messed up the cameras. Oh no! Here I am. I'm over here. Yeah. Pull me up. <sighs> I do this every week. That was some pretty good mime. <laughs> Why? Thank you. <laughs> I okay. studied for 14 years in France, and then yeah. Okay, um, <laughs> you have to say no. No, I didn't, because <laughs> I actually believed you. Um, <laughs> the, uh, uh, Going downstairs. Um, okay, okay. So the Groovy Ghoulies were a, a gigantic hit when they came on in like 1969, 70. I remember mm-hmm. them. They were huge. They were gigantic. They were the biggest thing on Saturday morning. Um, they were a spinoff of Sabrina the Teenage Witch, which was itself a spinoff of the Archies, uh, all by filmation. Um, and the Archies were a gigantic hit. They were they were truly gigantic in like 68 or whatever. Yeah. And Hanna-Barbera, who had been the kings of Saturday morning up to that point, were furious. And because of the success of the Archies and the Groovy Ghoulies, they created Scooby-Doo. And they followed that model of what we just saw. Uh, a thin storyline with a pop song uh, yeah. to, to, to kill like a, a third or a quarter of the show. Um, yeah. And they added the whole... The they didn't just do gags. They, they actually wrote a storyline. But they, the reason they chose to have... The reason they chose to have teenagers and music was because of the Archies. Uh, and then wow. after, after the... After the success of Scooby Doo, they snapped up the the license to uh, um, Josie and the Pussycats, um, and uh, which which was an Archie property, but they snapped it up so Filmation couldn't get it. And uh, and the reason they they modeled their stories around kids solving a mystery was because uh, starting in at around 1970, the um, the children's oh, what was it called? There was an organization that uh, there was a grassroots organization that lobbied Congress to establish uh, establish censorship rules for cartoons <coughs> no. because uh, parents had decided there was too much gunplay in cartoons. Uh, right. There was too much. Uh, uh, there were, there were, there were characters dying. There was too much violence. Um, and so, <clears throat> well, okay. Uh, Steve is pointing out Scooby-Doo premiered in 69. Groovy Ghoulies started in 1970. Well, the Ghoulies had been a part of the Sabrina show. Yeah. From Sabrina. Which yeah. Came from and the Archies, Archies uh, and the Archies Archie had been, had been even before that. Yeah. But Scooby-Doo was definitely a response to the Archies. Um, yeah. Um, and then Anna Barbera ran with it. Yeah, they totally yeah. ran with it. And the oh, reason, okay. the reason, the reason they did the whole benign mystery thing was because they couldn't do stuff like, um, like uh, Johnny Quest anymore. They couldn't have villains shooting guns at the kids. Huh. Uh, 
and uh, so so they chose this completely benign type of story that had no actual monsters in it, and it resulted in a show that today is considered like the ultimate skeptic show for kids. Yeah, because there there are no there There's are no, no there are no real <laughs> monsters. It's always just a crooked land developer or a crooked lawyer. Yeah. Um. Uh, but then, but then in the 1990s, when they started doing the straight to video movies, they started putting yeah. witches and zombies. And they they ruined yeah, the whole idea. The, the Thirteen ghosts of Scooby. -Doo. Yeah, yeah. But originally uh, there were no. Away, it's real. Originally there were no monsters or uh, uh, or uh, ghosts or anything actually threatening in Scooby Doo. But they, but yeah, Hanna Barbera beat the hell out of the whole uh, Scooby Doo model after that. Every almost every show they did was a group of teenagers with a band solving crimes. I mean, there was a Goober, Goober and the Ghost Chasers, and the Funky Phantom, and, uh, Clue, and Club, Clue, Clue Club, Jabberjaw, Speed Buggy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. So so that's how it all started. I can't really think about Goldie Gold and action. Action Jackson is that the name or Action Jack? Action. Can't remember that. That was the one that they departed from. That Goldie the, Gold and Action era. Jack. I don't think that was Hanna Barbera. I think that was um, Ruby Spears. Oh, you're right. You're right. Okay. Um, I could be wrong. But no, there was. I could see it as Ruby Spears now. Yeah. Instead, Ruby Spears did Fang Face, right? Fang yep. Face and uh, Plastic Man. But yeah. But. Uh, Ruby and Spears, the guys named Ruby and Spears started out at Hanna-Barbera and then they went yeah. and did their own thing. And then there was another, there was another couple of animators that, that went on and did the Hanna-Barbera stuff like Ruby Spears, who there was another two guys. I can't remember their names. Um, it, it's one that I saw recently and I was like, Oh, I forgot about those guys. Oh, uh, no. all, all sorts of people tried, uh, tried to do that thing and came and went ruby spears had some success um yeah but most didn't uh okay yeah. so when we're see a ruby spears it's like oh wow hannah barbera really knocked it out of the park on this one. Oh, <laughs> it's not hannah barbera and, and every every one of them started out feeling like okay we're gonna do it cheap but we're gonna do it better and they all did worse they, they all <laughs> yeah in the end <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, and then there was a uh, Depady Freeling, who I always forget that. Yeah. Depady Freeling was was uh, basically what was left of the Warner Brothers studio, the the Bugs Bunny studio, and they yeah. they did the Pink Panther cartoons. Yeah, they, and they the did Inspector the, and all those. The Inspector, the ad, uh, the Ant and the Aardvark, and they also oh, did. Yeah. And I always have to remind myself this: it was Depady Freeling that did the Planet of the Apes cartoon. No, they were. It was Depady Freeling. And I wow. have to someday. I have to show the Planet of the Apes, the first episode of yeah. the Planet of the Apes cartoon, because it's really arty. It's really artsy. Mm -hmm. Super artsy. Fully, and that's why it failed. I think. Yeah, a full it half. Was too good. Yeah, <laughs> half. It, it's like a, a twenty twenty two minute uh, show, and a full half of it, a full ten minutes of it, is silent. It's just art. Wow. And it's so strange. Um, I, I definitely need to show that. Okay. But okay. Yeah. For everybody who's here, um, tonight at 6 PM, I'll be yes. back on and we're going to watch ultra Q. We're going to watch three hours of ultra Q. Um, Whew. uh, and then, uh, next week, next week on bad Saturday morning, 10 AM Pacific, I'm going to be doing a marathon of Shazam and ISIS. And you, you don't want to miss that. Yeah. Uh, because they're, they're terrible shows. But boy, did they cast ISIS right. <laughs> that's that's like the only thing that show had going for it. Yeah. And boy, did they do that right. Uh, She's great. Yeah. Uh, Durham Steve says, bring your own Winnebago. Yeah. <laughs> but make sure it, a, a Winnebago powered by the gods. <laughs> a, a Winnebago powered by Zeus himself. <laughs> 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 Who sounds an awful lot like Filmation. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Lou Scheimer. Sounds an yeah. awful lot like Lou Scheimer. You know, you have to... As awful as Filmation Studios were, you have to hand it to Lou, Lou Scheimer. 
he had really creative people coming up with ideas. Yes, he did. They, they came up with nonstop ideas, and they did. A, they had a lot of firsts. ISIS mm-hmm. was the first American television show with a woman superhero. It was the first wow. one before yeah. Wonder Woman. Before Wonder Woman, yeah. Um, and uh, and she even had she was a school teacher who was secretly ISIS, and she had a fellow school teacher who was a guy, a tall guy with a mustache who was basically her lowest lane. He was in trouble every week and she had to rescue him. Yeah. There was always an avalanche. Yeah. <laughs> and always trapped in a cave. Um, uh, but uh, they, they, yeah, they cast Joanna Cameron in that role and she was exactly right. And there's no other reason to remember the show because I've been watching them uh, the last few days preparing for next week and they're terrible. They're really bad. Right, she's good. <laughs> she's good. She is good. Um, Steve says, whose idea was it for Billy Batson to ride around protecting a secret identity in a Winnebago with a Shazam lightning bolt on the front? <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I would yeah. like to know that, how they got there <laughs> yeah. from the Shazam. I, I guess uh, I, I guess he could claim that he was just a fan. The, the, <laughs> hey, I'm just yeah. a Shazam groupie. Um, <laughs> I mean, because who, who doesn't paint a wizard on the side of their van? And you know, yeah, and say, hey, I'm a, I'm, I'm a Hobbit fan. Yeah, you got to sell yeah. those toys. Was there a Shazam <laughs> Winnebago toy? Was <laughs> was there a Shazam Winnebago toy? Yeah. I, it's I don't, easy to make. <laughs> I, I don't remember one. But anyway, uh, yeah, Filmation came up with great ideas. Their execution was their problem. They, yeah. they just, and and here's the another thing about Filmation. Since we're talking about Filmation, I, I want to point this out to people. Filmation Studios had one building in Los Angeles, one building. Yeah. They, they didn't have a whole, uh, uh, campus studio. like, like, yeah. like, like, uh, other studios. They had one building. They did everything in that one building. Um, casting, audio recording, business offices, mm-hmm. uh, animation, ink and paint photography. They did it all in that one building in America. They never, never once, Outsourced. outsourced anything to any other company or overseas. They were, they, they paid their artists a living wage. Every artist uh, or uh, talent that I've ever seen an interview with who worked for Filmation, all of them, 100% of them say that it was a great company to work for. Yep. That Lou Scheimer took care of them. And how often do you hear that? Never. Never, ever. Um, so yeah, I wanted to point that out. All all the talking down I'm doing about filmation, but they did right by their artists. Yeah. Uh, and I want to give uh, the late Lou Scheimer the props for that. And he was giving yeah. he was giving jobs to all these washed up actors, like we saw in Ghostbusters. Uh, he he gave Jim Backus <laughs> a few dollars. Yeah, <laughs> 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 Larry Storch, Forrest Tucker. He gave them work. Right. Um, so. And he treated them apparently just as as absolute royalty when they'd show yeah. up on the yeah. set too. It was like, oh my gosh, you're a legend. Yes, of course. <laughs> Whatever you need, sir. Uh, Ted Ted Knight, who uh, Ted Baxter from the Mary Tyler Moore mm-hmm. Show, got his start at Filmation. He was yep. um, he was the voice that introduced the Superboy cartoons, which was mm-hmm. one of Filmation's earliest shows. Um, and of course, he went on to do more voice work. He was the voice of uh, the Super Friends. Meanwhile, yeah. back at the Hall of Justice, that was that was Ted Knight. Mm-hmm. Um, so okay, uh, I we need to get out of here because it's well afternoon. Oh um, yeah, yeah, it is. Thank you for watching, everybody. Please donate yeah. to Fiftieth Street. Thank you, Please. Captain. Thank you, Captain Slinky. We'll see you next week with uh, week. Shazam and ISIS, and I'll see you all tonight at six p.m. Pacific with uh, Ultra Q. Yay. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.